Today on Nerd Out, the Epoch Knots. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano, we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're talking about the Epoch Knots. And we were going to talk about this in a video a long time ago. Um, so what is the Epoch Knots? It is something that I mentioned a long time ago in a video about leader logs, and I said, oh, we'll cover that in a video in the future. And then I completely forgot about it until today. Uh, when somebody had asked me about the Epoch Knots on Telegram, and I was about to just send them a link to my video, I watched the video and I was like, oh, I didn't cover that. So we're going to cover that today. So what is it? It is a very big, long, random number that is used in the calculation of a pool's leader logs. Uh, so this is what it looks like. It's usually represented as a hex string. So we just have all the, the bytes of it here instead of just representing it as a base 10 number, we represent it as a base 16 number. And it is 256 bits long. It's, um, it's very long, probably enough to represent the number of atoms in the observable universe. So it's not something that even a computer can guess. So how do we calculate it for the current epoch? We're just going to talk about the current epoch. We can also calculate it for the previous epoch and the next epoch if we're close enough to the epoch boundary, but we're just going to talk about the current epoch today. Um, so the first thing you do when you're calculating the epoch knots is you get the first slot of the epoch and the first slot of the previous epoch. And so that's done by getting you know what the current tip is and getting some uh, protocol parameters to figure out how many slots are there in an epoch things like that and then we have the first slot of the epoch and then to get the previous epoch we subtract off the number of slots in an epoch which is one of those protocol parameters also in some of the config json files the shelly config json file when you start up so that's where we're pulling it from here is this uh, Shelly config file. The next thing you need to do is calculate the stability window. So the stability window is the number of blocks that the Cardano network considers fixed and will never change. And that's used also when, when we're dealing with the epoch knots because we need to pick kind of a random value from the past that we know is not going to change or there's there's not going to be a, um, a a block reorganization or something like that. So the stability window is three times the Byron protocol constant K divided by the active slots coefficient. And what this calculates out to in the end is the number of slots in 1.5 days. And that's what it is on mainnet. It's a little bit different on, well, same on testnet. Other networks like the Guild network or the Plutus network, it'll be a little different. We don't have to, because we have shorter, like one hour or two hour epochs, I don't recall what. And then we need to figure out where the stability window start is. And that's where we go back to that first slot of the epoch. And then we subtract 1.5 days worth of slots off of that. So we're looking at the spot in the previous epoch um, where we, we know that the blocks are no longer going to change. And so once we have that, that stability window start, we can get the ETA val uh, V value, which is that rolling knots. So in C and CLI, we're calculating this as we go, as we sync blocks. And every block that comes in has a block hash and that block hash is added in to this rolling nonce value of ETAV. And the node actually throws it out and doesn't ever keep it around in C and CLI because we use it, um, we want to go ahead and save it off. So we actually save it off in our database. And we grab the rolling nonce value from the block right before the stability window start slot and that'll be used in the epoch knots calculation. Um, then there's another value, so that's, sorry, that's the NC value, and then there's um, 
So that's the nots C value, and then there's the nots hash value. We call it in H. And that is where we get the hash before the first slot of the previous epoch. And so that's kind of like you go back to the, well, I guess it's the last slot of the epoch before the previous epoch. And those two values are used to calculate the epoch nonce. And so what we do is we concatenate those two big numbers together. So we just smash them together. Here we're doing it as hex strings. And then we run the epoch nonce calculation, which is a Blake2B 256 hash. So that gives us, you know, we go from 512 bytes back down to 250, or sorry, 256 bytes. 512 bits back down to 256 bits or a hash length of 32 bytes. And we run that Blake to be hash on it and that's what gives us our epoch nonce value here. Um, there is a slight variation on the epoch nonce if the protocol parameter for extra entropy has been set. That's uh, We did that once kind of a while after the launch of Shelly just to make, or actually after we went to um, D equals zero, just to make sure that there was no, um, nobody had biased the epoch knots in favor of certain pools, etc. So we, we did like a, there's a video I've got in the past where we, we talk about the extra entropy calculation. But yeah, we're not gonna cover that today. We're just gonna cover the standard one. So with that, nerd out.